Hi, in this video, we're going to do a few things. So first, I'm going to start off by trying to answer a question I received here on the channel from a viewer. As always, if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment here in the comment section below. Secondly, we're going to do a random math problem. I'm just going to pick a problem from one of these books randomly and we're going to do it. So kind of fun. I don't know. And that way you leave this video knowing something. It's like you walk out of the video. If you watch the whole thing, you learn one thing. And I think that's better than learning nothing. I watch a lot of videos on YouTube and sometimes I feel like some of the videos, I mean, they're really good and I enjoy them, but I feel like I get nothing from them. I just feel like, okay, that was just a bunch of like flashy stuff. and I didn't really learn anything. So hopefully you learned something uh, from this video. Okay. So let's go ahead and read uh, the comment. This First, I'd like to say I love your channel. Is it realistic to take a course in mathematics with the aim of getting 100% in every test? There is a video game concept called the no-hit run where a player will attempt to play an entire game without taking any damage. That's really hard, by the way, especially in the old Nintendo games. Like, I can't imagine doing that in, like, Mega Man. Anyways, I digress. I'd love to try to apply this concept to Calculus 2. Additionally, is it realistic to do math every single day? Thanks for answering, Lucas. So as far as doing math every single day, I think it's realistic. I do math almost every single day. I, I do a few problems every day at least, and I try to read a little bit every day. I don't do math every day, but I try to. So I do think it's realistic, but like sometimes it's not practical, right? Like maybe it's Christmas day and you have to spend it with your family, or maybe it's the weekend and you, know, you have a significant other and you want to go away. So, you know, it's just, it's tough. It's tough, but I try to do math as much as I can, at least at least a little bit every day. I, I do like doing it every day, and I try to be really consistent. I also try to read a little bit every day. So I would say try to do it every day. Worst case, you don't, and you'll do it most of the time. As far as getting 100%, yeah, it's possible. When I took differential equations, I got 100 or over 100 on every single exam, and I was able to do it. When I took calculus three, I never got a hundred, right? I tried, I always had like a 91 or a 90 and like the teacher would bring the test back and say, oh, ho, ho, ho. tried to get a hundred, couldn't do it. You know, I was just like, no, I hated that class. But even though I did well, I just didn't, I didn't like the class, but yeah. So it's possible. My advice is this, try to get a hundred. In other words, try to get the highest grade in the class, because if you aim to be number one, if you aim to be the best, right, whatever your reasons are, just aim to be the best. Worst case scenario, I mean, and, and if you really put in the effort, you'll at least do well, right? If you study like a person who wants to get 100 studies, that means you're going into overtime, like you're doing tons of math, tons of preparation. And so worst case scenario, you know, you get an A or, or B, you probably won't get a C and you probably won't fail, especially if you study enough to actually try to get a perfect score. Um, as far as Calculus 2, you mentioned Calculus 2. Um, I did pretty well in that course. I got an A. I don't know if I had any hundreds. It's been a while, but I had mostly A's. And I remember like comparing answers with my friends. And, you know, I would do better than most people in the class. But I studied a lot. And so, yeah. So hopefully that helps. If anyone has any advice for this person, uh, please leave a comment uh, in the comment section below. So, yeah. Hey, let's go ahead and do some math right now. Okay, so this is the math problem we're going to do, and I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So we're going to use something called integration by parts to do this problem. The integration by parts formula, I'll write it down for you. It says that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So this is the formula we're going to use. However, I want to mention that when you first see this problem, you're tempted to do this. You're tempted to let u be equal to x squared, in which case, taking the derivative of both sides, you get du equals 2x dx. And then you could divide by 2. So you have 1 half du equals x dx. And then basically, um, your x dx is here, it becomes 1 half du, and you just get 1 half arc sine u. However, to integrate arc sine u, you actually need to use this formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip this substitution, and we're going to do it with parts right away. You can do that if you let this entire thing here be u. So we're going to let u be equal to the arc sine of x squared. And then dv is what's left over. Remember, when you're using parts, the dv always has to have the dx. So dv is x dx. Okay, 
So now we need to compute everything else for the formula for integration by parts. So du is the derivative of arc sine. Recall if you just have arc sine x, its derivative is one over the square root of one minus x squared. So here we have the arc sine of x squared. So we have to use the chain rule when we take this derivative. So it's du equals one over the square root of one minus x squared squared times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and then we have our dx. And then I'm just going to clean this up. du is equal to 2x dx. And then here we have 1 minus x to the fourth. Integrating this one, we get v equals x squared over 2. You don't add the plus c whenever you're doing parts, okay? All right, so now we're going to apply the formula. So I'm going to write down the original integral. So you have the integral of x arc sine x squared dx. And so this is going to be uv, so this times this, minus the integral of v du. Okay, so um, these twos will cancel, which is really cool, because we're multiplying these. And basically we're going to get x times x squared. It's going to give us x cubed. And then here we have the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth dx. So this part is done. We basically just have to deal with, with um, this part here. So to do that, we're going to make another substitution. Uh, I've already used u, so I'm going to use w. So I'm going to let w be equal to 1 minus x to the fourth. So dw will be negative 4x cubed dx. And now we don't have um, uh, a negative 4 here, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm just going to divide by the negative 4. So we have negative one-fourth dw equals x cubed dx. So continuing, this is x squared over 2 arc sine x squared. And then minus and minus is going to be plus because a minus here is a minus here. I'm going to pull out the one-fourth. So it's plus one-fourth. And then this, again, it's negative one-fourth dw, so it'll just be dw over, and then on the bottom here, we just have the square root of y, w. <laughs> I almost said u, w, right? So this is equal to x squared over two, arc sine x squared, okay, plus one fourth, and then write this to the one half power and bring it up so your exponent becomes negative. So this is x squared over two, arc sine x squared, plus one-fourth, add one to this, so you get w to the one-half, divide by the result, plus c, so this is equal to, go on pretty quick, arc sine x squared. You basically, you're multiplying by two here, so you're gonna get two over four, which is one-half, square root of, that's a square root, and then w was one minus x to the fourth, plus our constant of integration, Boom, and there's the answer. So did that pretty quickly, went through it pretty fast, but hopefully you understood some of it, and hopefully you walk out of this video knowing a little bit more, even, even, even just knowing that there is a formula, <laughs> and it exists, and it's called the integration by parts formula. That's better than not knowing it. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Good luck.